Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a Save the Bees poster. So ideally this is the example we're going to go with over here. So what we're going to do is I am going to show you guys step by step on how to complete and make your own poster. So you're going to need a couple different things which your teacher is going to provide for you. So we are going to need a canvas. I'm using a little gesso board going to need a pencil and an eraser if it has both in one you're doing good we're also going to need some paint so we're going to need like yellow orange black and white and a brown which we have in the classroom and then we're going to use some paint brushes to fill in the space so I'm going to show you guys step by step, might be done a little bit faster time loop just in case, but also remember for those of you who are in my previous classroom at our school, um, there is also a step by step on Google Classroom with pictures to show you how to do things step by step if the video does confuse you. So don't worry, don't feel stressed, and let's get to painting. Alright, so as you can tell on our picture right here, we have three ba we have some basic circles in there. So when we are drawing our pictures, just know that you're just gonna start off with some basic circles on our image. So we should have the head, we should have the eyeballs, the like upper part of the body and then the abdomen of our B. So it should consist of those. So now what we're gonna do is I'm going to make sections for our legs so we know where our legs are sprouting and we will go from there. All right, so these are gonna be our like areas to where the joints of the legs and the arms connect to the bee's body. So now we're gonna do some gesture marks that show exactly where our little legs are gonna be. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so they might look a little wonky, but it's okay. We're just trying to get some nice shape into our so now that we have most of the body, we have to add the two little legs down here. So that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the two legs because there is a set of legs here and a set of legs there. So there should be six in total. So I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so now that we have all the legs, I'm going to go ahead and add the antenna. And then we'll go ahead and start adding wing details for our bee. Okay, so I just added some gesture line right here, so that way we know where our um, wings are going to go. Remember when we're talking about gesture, gesture means basically a generic line that helps us place where exactly our um, detail is going to go. So typically it'll be just like how we did a sh the simple shape here that follows our actual B on here. Like So if we're looking at a reference, this is the gesture line and it helps build so we can actually create the wings, which is exactly what we're gonna do now. So now we're gonna draw the wings and it's gonna be a little difficult, but once you have this gesture line, it's really gonna help with our shape. So this is the top of the wing. So the top of the wing is gonna be longer than the short part of the wing. So I'm gonna take my guideline and start from here and end it here. So if you need to mark it so you can see exactly where you're going to follow, 
you can always mark your areas. You always want to make sure you map it out visually and use your math side of the brain, so the left side of your brain, so that way we can form, formulate symmetrical wings. So a symmetry, symmetry it's going to be even on the same side, which is why we're adding these guidelines. So this is a very, very basic outline for our B. Some of it might seem a little off. If you want to correct it, take time to correct it. Uh, so that way we know that when we're adding our paint to it, it looks great and it looks even. If it doesn't, it's okay. Just remember not everything's going to be insanely perfect, but we want to get it close enough. So I just added minimal detail. So that way we can just focus on the background. When we're doing our background, we're going to get a little messy. If you guys want to do the same background I'm doing, you can. If not, it's perfectly fine. Choose a background that you are comfortable with color-wise. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a square brush. So that way I can go into all the cracks and crevices that I'm going to need. So that way I can work on my background. So I'm going to pull up my palette and I'm going to mix the colors that I would like. Just so that way I am able to get the background that I am looking for. Now I did this one differently. I'm going to change up the colors to the background just to make it a little lighter. Because I'm not quite fond of how dark it is. But if you like it dark, keep it dark. Always make choices that are going to help you as an artist. And don't worry about the color being flat and even. You want different textures and elements, especially since we're going to be doing a printmaking technique. So make sure you have so much texture and movement in your paintings because that's what's going to make your painting really pop. So if it's see-through and if you see brush strokes, it is okay. Don't worry about it. That is the goal. We want things to have texture just like how we talked about before remember that all these things our unit is called unity so it's every single aspect of the principles and elements of art coming into our art piece so i'm going to go ahead and continue and what we can finish our background piece All right, so if you mess up and accidentally get into the lines, it's okay. Do not panic. Your drawing is a guideline, so you can always go over it with paint. Do not stress. Take a breath. I did that so many times where I accidentally didn't go close enough or I went too far into my design, and that is okay. That's why we sketch it on our um, paintings first, so that way we can see exactly what we're doing. Alright, so I made sure I cleaned my brush. Always make sure you're constantly cleaning your brush so that way your brushes are kept longer and it helps you with your paint because your paint dries out on your brush really quick. So the more water and the more you hydrate the hair of the brush, the easier it is going to be to apply your paint to your canvas. So like I said, make sure that there's texture because with the texture of the background it's gonna make it look better because we're gonna add some honeycombs to the background so we're gonna let this dry if you need to um, take the hair dryer there is a hair dryer in class make sure you put it on the cold setting and then you're going to dry the paint we always want to make sure it's put on cold so that way your heat does not ruin the acrylic because it'll make it bubbly it'll make it warp and it's not good so we want to keep it on the cold setting so it should be the top on the 
our hair dryer in that classroom specifically the top the various two buttons the one at the very top is going to be the temperature so make sure that one's all the way down and then the button on the bottom turns it on so the farther up you slide it the more air that's going to come out of it so that's how you use the hair dryer if you didn't already know so we're going to let this dry and then we're going to go ahead and start working on the honeycomb background okay so now that the background is dry over here what i'm going to do is i'm taking the bubble wrap that i have and i'm going to go ahead and put some yellow on top of it like just like how i have it already colored here i'm just going to do the same thing so i'm just wetting my paintbrush real quick grabbing some yellow and then you're just gonna dab it onto the bubble wrap oops so we're just gonna go like that and you can kind of put it on as many or as little of it you want you know whatever you feel comfortable with it does just does not have to be the whole thing it can be however you put your paint on there this is where it's going to get weird. So this one I'm going to show you step by step. You're going to take it and you're going to flip it. Now because um, we're because it's limited space on mine, what you're going to do is is okay if you're going to put it on top of your bumblebee because we're going to paint right over it. So don't worry about it. This is acrylic paint. It works. Press down on the bubble wrap. And we're going to lift careful with how you lift and it creates like a honeycomb effect which is what we're looking for so I'm gonna add a little more paint to my bubble wrap just because I know that that kind of took off most of it I'm doing the same thing all the way around so I'm gonna strategically place it we're leaving the impression of the of the bubbles onto our background. So it should look kind of like that. So that way we can see. And I'm just gonna go ahead and finish doing it all the way around the bumblebee so that way it's giving a little bit more texture. all right so now that we have our bubbles on our paintings what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple different brushes so you want to have a round brush a round brush usually has a round edge sometimes it'll have a point but we want to have something with like line details um, I, you want to also make sure that it's a little bit on the thicker side so when we're painting we're able to uh, fill in more of this space. So the first thing I'm going to do since we already have yellow is we're going to fill the abdomen right here with yellow just so that way on his little butt it's a little bit easier to add the brown on top since the yellow is already there and we don't have to worry about it since the fuzzy part is with the brown that's what we're going to do. So I'm just dipping mine into yellow. Oops. And then we're just gonna fill this whole circle with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. All right, so now that we've filled that with yellow, I'm gonna use a different color. So I want to use 
a Naples yellow and it's basically like a really light brown yellow so if you want to mix a color you can add yellow white and some burnt umber together and it'll create a similar color if that's what you want but I'm gonna take that really really light brown like a yellow brown and I'm just gonna put it on the wings over here you can kind of see the difference in the tone of the way it looks when you see it more in person and up close and you're just gonna brush over the wings wait where did I put you oh there you are just like that and we're gonna do that to both sides all right so now that we have the wings down what we're gonna do is we're going to add some dark brown and to mostly everything else. So in the legs, the antenna, the eyes, the body, that is where we're gonna add the brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you so that way we can all get that accomplished together. Alright, so remember with acrylic paint that it's going to look kind of transparent, especially with the brand that we're probably going to be using in class. So it's going to take multiple layers sometimes. Like it's really see-through and chalky and if you don't like that, it's okay. Let it dry. You can use the hair dryer to dry it quick and then you're going to add more layers on top. If you don't feel like adding more of the brown layers, it's okay too. And that is because we're also going to add some black in there to get to give some depth. So don't worry about it if you think it's too light or if there's too many brush strokes. Because like I said, it's okay. We are going to add black. We're going to add so much dimension. And our paintings are always going to go through an ugly stage is what we call it. So don't worry about that and just take a breath and we'll keep continuing. Okay, so now I have most of this set up to where the colors are pretty flat and they're filled in. So I put in some more of this burnt umber um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the bee a little bit more fluffy by adding some brown and we're just going to basically do basic stroke lines. So I'm putting some brown on my paint palette and we're just brush strokes. Really nice fluffy soft strokes. Just like that. And I'm going to finish everything off. Alright, so now I'm going to outline the wings with black. And I have a fine liner brush. So I'm going to dip it in black and do the outline of the wings. So now I'm going to do the detail work and add black all the way around on my bumblebee so that way it has a little bit more depth and dimension just like how the wings do so it pops a little bit more. Alright, so now I am going to add the bee's stinger. So I'm just dipping it in my black and making a little triangle just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it in with some brown and some black so that way I can have some dimension and um, it's just filled in a little bit so I'll go ahead and do that. So 
So now I'm gonna add the little other fine details, so adding more texture to it and giving some more depth. So I'm gonna use my white and I'm gonna use my Naples yellow, which Naples yellow you can just do primary yellow, mix it with some white, and if you need a little bit of brown, you can add a tad bit of brown in there too to make this like really soft yellow. And we're just gonna add details to the rest of the bee just to, like I said, add more dimension and more depth and to make our bumblebees a little bit brighter and fuzzier. Now we're going to create some emphasis. So emphasis basically means we're just trying to make our eyeballs look directly at our little bumblebee friend. So we're going to do some broken line all the way around the bumblebee to make our bees pop with black paint. So take your fine liner brush and let's go ahead and add some lines. All right, and there you have it. We have a brand new bumblebee fuzzy friend for our new art portfolio. All right, so that's all for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed the lesson and I hope that it was really, really helpful and that you guys love it and that you have something great for your portfolio. So I shall see you guys next time on our next lesson and I hope you guys have a beautiful lovely day. Bye!